Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and I'm absolutely delighted to have four wonderful friends in the studio today. <laughs> hey everybody. Hey John. Hey. <laughs> well, hey, I, I'd love to have you just uh, uh, briefly uh, introduce yourselves. All right, let's start with you. Um, so my name is Ariane or um, Ari, and um, Dave is my partner. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to say. I'm a former technology professional and currently pursuing a master's in music therapy. Fantastic. That's great. I, 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 I love that, that concept of music therapy. I have a friend who, I have a couple friends that do that. So you and I need to oh, talk about wonderful. that later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And Dave, you've been on the podcast before. Welcome back. Uh, why don't you yeah. introduce yourself real briefly? Yeah, thanks, John. Glad to be back. A lot of fun on the first time. A lot of fun meeting you in person, which we'll talk a little bit about here. Uh, yeah, Dave Edwards from Toronto. Ari is my better half. I am a former director of operations for nearby cargo bike delivery, and currently I'm a cycling educator uh, for Cycle Toronto. Fantastic. That's great. And and you did say former, <laughs> you yes. know, at, at nearby. When you were on the podcast, you were you were still actively engaged in the organization. And uh, certainly what we're going to talk about today is kind of related to that business and cargo yeah. bikes. And we'll we'll get into all of that good stuff later. Absolutely. Uh, Jordan. And, and I, I should yeah. just mention, like, I, uh, I'm not, you know, I, I still own part of that company. So I still right. am uh, involved with them, just not uh, on a day to day basis. I'm, yeah, I'll hand it over. Exactly. And Jordan. Everybody probably knows who you are, but introduce yourself anyways, real briefly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Jordan Clark. I'm John's uh, cycling sidekick uh, in the Netherlands. <laughs> well, you know, every time I go to the Netherlands, I'm John's cycling sidekick. Uh, I'm also an urban planner. I work for a landscape architecture firm uh, in Dallas, Texas. And it's nice to be back. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's good to have you back. So, yeah. So this is going to be just kind of a, a fun little um, reaction video to uh, some still photography as well as some video clips. Uh, but this particular clip here, you haven't seen because I've put this together. This is a little bit of uh, our experience on the afternoon of November 1st, right after we, 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 we gathered right here at work cycles to go uh, pop in and say hi to, to Henry Cutler. And, uh, and you all know now that we had been riding earlier in the afternoon with Jason Slaughter, which was a big, big secret right. because he didn't want anybody to know that we were out there doing that because he always has hordes of people, you know, crashing the gates and trying to find him and everything. But he was gracious enough to actually deliver us to the front door of work cycles. And he probably oh, wow. passed you guys because literally it was like moments later, seconds later, you know, he rolled away in the direction you came back and, uh, and it was all good fun. And so I'm going to actually hit, you know, play on this and really we have the ability to stop this video as we go. And I'm going to stop it <laughs> right away. And, and talk a little bit about this particular experience of popping into work cycles now. And in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to just reverse this just a little bit to that shot right there with Henry. And, and the reason why this was kind of a, a special, uh, do you, you guys remember why I had him hold up this sweatshirt, Dave, you're <laughs> nodding. Yeah, if I remember correctly, this, uh, as a lot of work cycles, work cycles content does, it relates to our good friend Brandon Lust uh, and his request for a work cycles hoodie to be uh, found or brought back or, or sent to him. And and I think this is the best uh, the best Henry could do given his current stock. Uh, not, <laughs> exactly. Not, not, not sure this is uh, going to fit uh, Brandon's stature, uh, but a, a, a fun little moment for sure. And he's the he's the connector to work cycles for me, absolutely. Yeah. And he's the connector for me too. Yeah. He, he went out of his way to say, Hey, please can you know, stop by, say hi to Henry. And uh, so that's the reason why this location was on, uh, you know, was on the, our agenda for Jordan and I, we were like, okay, we, we've got to do this. And we, uh, asked, uh, uh, Jason to, to deliver us to the doorstep and he did. And, uh, yeah, the only thing that, that Brandon had asked, uh, uh, in leading up to this trip was he's like, 
if it's possible, could you please get me like a, a dark hoodie uh, from, uh, you know, either Henry and or uh, Jos Sleismans with the International Cargo Bike Festival. And, and right. unfortunately, I failed on both accounts. I, I do apologize <laughs> there, <laughs> Brandon. But uh, we got it. We Henry got a, a chuckle out of doing this and saying, well, this one's here you go. This is perfect for you. <laughs> but now you had some connection too, Dave, with, uh, with work cycles, right? You, you maybe, you know, tried to get a work cycle at some point. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, just, just a few years ago, actually, when I met Ariane, I mean, I had one bike, um, I've generally just kind of exploded, uh, with, with, uh, the ownership of different bikes, uh, in the last five or six years. But, um, you know, it was through Twitter and getting to know Brandon a little bit that uh, I, I did start to learn about cargo bikes. And um, I did, I, I fell in love uh, with work cycles with his and the videos he was doing and the content he was sharing about it. Uh, also, uh, there's uh, Doug, uh, Doug Gordon from the War on Cars has just uh, absolutely beautiful work cycles that he showcases a lot. So I went pretty far down the path. Um, trying to import one uh, here to Canada at the time, there there was no retailers that do sell them. So I was back and forth with a salesperson at uh, at Work Cycles. I ended up getting a different one just to avoid some of the import hassles and that sort of thing. But uh, it's still a dream that one day that will uh, that will be in the arsenal. They're just uh, stunning bikes. Yeah, they really are. And since we're talking a, a lot about uh, uh, work cycles, I'll go ahead and pull up their 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 web page here. Uh, fantastic bikes, uh, very very well made, and uh, yeah. Highly recommend them. So I, again, you guys haven't seen this little video clip, so I'm just going to let this kind of roll. And this is us uh, literally pulling away from work cycles and uh, and heading out. So Ariane, when after you know you had this opportunity to you know attend the International Cargo Bike Festival with Dave, and uh, then we all hook up and you know take off for a little uh, bike ride uh, after you know the. Uh, uh, meeting up there at work cycles. What, what were some of your thoughts of, you know, that trip? Cause this was like your last afternoon, right? Um, yeah, I think it was near the end of the trip. Uh, yeah. You know, Dave and I were talking earlier about the difference between like we had been to Amsterdam before in 2019 and it made a huge impression on us. Um, and on me in terms of uh, making a decision to incorporate more um, small trips and shopping and, you know, that I can, you know, you don't have to put all your cycling gear on. You can just sort of grab a coat and go, right? Like that was, it was very, you know, it was a huge uh, eye-opening experience to see people just get on their day-to-day on a bike. So that made a big impression on us. And then coming back the second time, like, of course you see that, but I think you sort of look a little deeper. And if anything, like I notice more, you know, how, what the infrastructure looks like and how they separate, they truly separate everybody. And then, you know, when we come back here, you really notice it's very jarring how everybody's just thrown into the road together. Like that makes, should make sense, right? Like it's, it's very, very deeply weird to me, having seen how this works, to come home and just be thrown in the street with cars and pedestrians. But you know what? It's really something to see how they've set up their streets, how beautiful they are. You can see the street we're looking at right now was, was decorated. I think it was like a pre-festival of lights. Um you know, people are out, they're not dressed up like they're going for like a bike ride. They're just kind of getting around their day. There's a, such a huge diversity in age and background on the people you see on bikes. Like it's just so normalized in a way that, that from the, the North American perspective just doesn't comprehend, right? So there's really something about experiencing this firsthand and, and partaking in it. Because I've also talked to people who, you know, they go to Amsterdam, but they don't, they're too afraid to, to cycle or, you know, there's real fear. And, you know, I just, I enjoy it so much. If anything, one of the things that uh, I do notice more is, you know, the quiet of the streets, just how there are still conflicts. So it's not perfect by any stress. So I think you start to see more where the difficulties are and that they still are moving a lot of people through the city it's just different and conflicts are going to happen, right? It's just the magnitude. So once you take the cars out, what a difference that can make. Yeah. 
And I paused on this particular image because uh, this is actually a loading zone. This is a a loading and unloading zone, uh, you know, for the motor vehicles. So uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there was uh, 30 kilometer per hour stencils along this route. So this is shared space. This is, you know, considered a bicycle priority street of sorts. And so the speed limit in this area was 30 uh, kilometers or kilometers per hour. I don't know. You, you guys t- talk in, in metrics. Is it kilometers or kilometers? I always say well, kilometers. We'd, we'd say kilometers, but uh, I, I, I hear it. I, I, I do hear a kilometer once in a while, for sure. You're fine. So, so Dave, you, you've been in this business of, of um, deliveries and cycle logistics and everything. Talk a little bit about how important this is that we see off to the right of the screen here of having like this loading and unloading zone. So, you know, de- you know, services and delivers can be delivered. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. As soon as you start to talk about bike lanes, uh, you know, it's hard not to compare everything to where we are now, but you know, one of the biggest objections is how are people going to get their stuff? Right. And, and, you know, we, we see in, in a lot of our infrastructure here, and it's something you see in Amsterdam as well, is, is where there's just paint, you're going to end up with people parked there. Because at the end of the day, as much as we want everybody to be on a bike, people deliver things by van uh, the large majority of the time. So I think when I see this right here, this speaks to, we know that's going to happen. So we're going to provide a proper place for it to happen, Right. And I think what's interesting, I rode up and down the street many times while Arianne was shopping this morning, actually, um, is, you know, right at the beginning, we did see at least one delivery cargo bike coming down that street. It's it's just such a mix, right? Like we, we saw somebody in a mobility chair going down that street in that clip. We see people walking. We see a car pulled out. And then we see a delivery truck. So So to me, this is just one of those million instances over there where you see proof that this can work right? We can mix and still have a place for people to do necessary things like make deliveries in different methods. Yeah. Yeah. And I popped over to this little video here uh, and I'm going to come back to this, but I'm going to pop back over to where we were just at to show that very first clip, the very first little section of this video clip. Uh, And Jordan, you're going to like this too, is that you're going to see that Dave captured a small uh, trash truck and uh, and let's see if we can everybody if we can see this. Boom. And it, and and <laughs> I I thought that was just really super cute because it was like oh wait a minute what is that thing car- carrying and 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 carting along there because it was just like this little small little truck it could have had anything in there uh but dave you said you slowed it down and went back and looked at it and confirmed yeah that was the trash bags it was trash of some sort yeah right we we hear that all the time is how how are we you know we have to build roads around the size of our vehicles here in north america where you know the flip side as you guys know well is to build your vehicles around the size of the roads yeah yeah and uh, for the second time uh, in this day, because earlier in the day, uh, Jordan and I, when we were on the, the very, very first part of our, our ride with Jason Slaughter with Not Just Bikes, um, we focused in on one of the uh, construction related bike diversions. And so that's what I, I was like, hey, guys, I got to get some shots of this. So that's what this is, is we're uh, hanging out chatting and uh, and I'm I'm like going fascinated by the extent to which they created this this diversion and then we continued on our ride <laughs> and headed on out uh, jordan why don't you reflect a little bit about you know this i mean this was towards the tail end of our day and uh, we're we're able to get out this was your first full day of riding in in amsterdam is that correct yep that's right yep well yeah to, to say a little bit more i mean when you're like rolling up here to the central station and looking at all these, these bikes and everything, what were some of the things that really resonated for you? Uh, one of the things that I feel like stood out here, maybe more than anywhere else is just how much parking you actually can have on the narrow streets of a place like Amsterdam. If it's uh, for bikes, you know, as opposed to a personal automobile. Um, and so like that just makes the extension, of you know, the extension of your being on two feet that much greater if you can actually have a bike outside your front door in such cramped quarters. Um, and I, I had a blast on this uh, 
cycle path that we were on here along the water because it's obviously like a beautiful trip to take. Um, but man, it was like, it was like, a you know, an urban highway for, for cyclists through here. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I still felt like it was comfortable despite there being pretty wide divergence in speeds of people using the cycle path, at least among, um, among cyclists. Um, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Ari, when you were rolling through this, how comfortable did this feel from your perspective? Um, pretty comfortable. I mean, if anything, like, you know, what we're looking at right now is the entrance to their train station. And I think here there was definitely, you know, different, like you can see, you know, there were some scooters. So like you did have to be mindful um, of pedestrians and other other people on different modes, right? I think that was the only thing. Other other than that, it was very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Dave, you and I were commenting on the fact when we were rolling through that section of the fact that uh, it was just going to be a, a few weeks later uh, that the the new underground, literally underwater, uh, bike garage uh, was going to be done for for bikes. And in fact, last week, uh, it in fact opened because <laughs> we're recording this on uh, January 31st. And, uh, you know, the, really the grand ribbon cutting and everything uh, took place just this past week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry to have missed that, to be honest. We did. Um, I know I have another video uh, that I, I flipped over where we did uh, ride around some underground parking, some older underground parking that's near this location. Uh, but I do remember that talk. And if you go back in that video a little bit, I think um, one of the things we don't see here is uh, because of the construction, we don't have pedestrians crossing uh, across that bike path right in front of the train station, which I believe is a is, is a place of high conflict there. I say conflict, like more interaction uh, with pedestrians and cyclists. But uh, when I look at this, I mean, uh, before we saw you, I think Ari and I rode up and down beside that bike parking a few times just because I just can't get enough of those bike racks. Like, I, I, that's just, it's just beautiful to me. Um, but, uh, you know, also just thinking of like, yeah, this is beautiful and it's it's great architecture and it's a great sight line and all that kind of stuff, but it's also just so easy to get to the train station, right? And really that's at the heart of this, right? Is this stuff makes sense, right? Like compare this to, you know, Toronto Union Stations, one of North America's largest train stations. And, you know, I'm not sure there's like, there's a little bit of bike parking. It's the highest traffic area in the city for cars. You have buses that can't reach it because traffic is is too congested. Uh, and then you see here, like, man, I just, I long for the ability to simply ride my bike to the train station, leave it securely and, and take a trip. Yeah. And if I go back just a few frames here and push forward uh, off to the left, you'll see uh, some of the ferries. And so that's where people oh, yeah. are heading over to the left there and, uh, you know, jumping onto the ferry. And then there's the construction uh, work. Uh, and that's what we end up seeing with the chain link fence off to the left as we continue rolling through. And then we see some other uh, sections for the ferry. And uh, <laughs> I think I even might have had some uh, footage of you, Dave, it looked like you were going to roll right onto the, onto the ferry and Ari is like, looking at me, where's he going? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're free, right? Uh, might as well. Yeah. 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 It, it just shuttles you over to the, um, um, I don't know the name of the uh, uh, the development, the neighborhood on the other side there, but yeah, it's you just roll right on up and head on over. Great way to get over there. Uh, good stuff. So reflect back a little bit, um, Ari, on in that that trip that you had there. This is your second time over to to the Netherlands, correct? Yes. Okay. What was it like going back that second time? I mean, it was, it was interesting because we, we stayed in a different area, but we still kind of stayed pretty central. Um, so a lot of it was, um, you know, revisiting some places that we've been to before and a few places that we hadn't. But um, if anything, one of the things that is always wild to me is just seeing like families out on bikes or we went through the Vondel park and, you know, you'd have like a huge family of like 10 people and everyone's just like cycling through the park. They've got like, you know, the seniors, the, you know, kids, everybody, everybody's, you know, enjoying being on a bike going through the park. 
Um, you know, the day to day stuff never bores me because it's, you know, you'll always see somebody carrying something you'll never think of on a bike or, you know, an old lady with her, you know, huge hat, you know, just <laughs> walking down the street. Like it's just endlessly entertaining. And like, I love to watch, but I also love to participate in it because I, I really do enjoy, you know, getting around. That's my preference would be to cycle over a transit or a car. Um, it just, uh, like it just never fails to interest me the way the city is laid out and how people are getting around and how, how like, like even just looking at this, like just the sheer volume, um, coming from, you know, the perspective of so much resistance to this, right. So seeing where it's been fully embraced, it just, it's unbelievable to me that this place exists. It seems so extraordinary, and yet, uh, as we know from uh, the, the audience uh, that is tuning in from the Netherlands, this is just commonplace to them. They're, they're, they are incredibly fascinated that we're fascinated by this. And uh, <laughs> so, Dave, you saw that, that little segment there uh, a, a few frames back where uh, you were uh, getting ready to roll right onto the, uh, the ferry. And so that's what onto we were talking ferry, yeah. about. Was, uh, and, and that's when Ari was, just like, Ari was like, what? Where's he going? Where's he going? <laughs> Where's he going? Yeah. I just wanted a shot of it, to be honest. Yeah, and, I know then, you just uh, wanted a shot of it. And, and, that was, and then that we was, had the, uh, you know, the NL Post, uh, the, the little mail bike there in front yeah. of us as well, which, um, you know, it's just yeah. another thing there. It's just like Ari was saying, it's just yeah. it's it's end it's endlessly fascinating to see what's commonplace in another part of the world. And, and yeah. I wouldn't say taken for granted, but it just exists. Right. Like. And I shouldn't say it just exists. It's not like work and advocacy hasn't played a part of it, as as anyone that follows this kind of stuff knows. It it isn't. It hasn't been around forever like this. But it's just, just to see what's possible, right? Like you can read about it. You can, you know, it's all over Twitter. You can watch a million videos. But until you jump in and participate in it, I like that word, participate. Um, yeah. You know, because it's tricky at first. It can be. But once you're in it, like it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just a fascinating way of life. Yeah. Jordan, did you get a chance to do the ferry? No. Ah. I'd love to, though. Oh, no. I'm bummed that we, we didn't get to yeah, get so, you on. Yeah, somehow I left a few things undone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. He he made it to, to Rotterdam once, twice? Uh, hmm, once or twice. At least once. Once, or, once for sure. I, I, yeah. I, I can't remember if you made it there uh, a second time we were scheduled to try to meet with some folks there in Rotterdam and the, all those appointments fell through at the end of my three week stay. I was like, Oh wait, I never made it to Rotterdam. <laughs> like, uh. and, and because folks, you know, Rotterdam is one of the best places to, to go to visit, to really see what happens when, uh, you know, a city gets rebuilt from the ground up in post-World War II and they build based on the automobile. And then, you know, a couple decades later, they realize, why is everything so dead in here? What, you know, this place is a, is a ghost town after, you know, 4 p.m. or something like that. And then striving to try to transform that environment. And so that's one of the reasons why I always like to go to Rotterdam because it's a wonderful reminder that, uh, this stuff is not etched in stone. We can, in fact, change our streets, and, and Rotterdam is going through and doing that. The other thing I wanted to do while pausing on the, the ferry here is to comment on the level of density that you see in the housing uh, off in the distance there. And uh, and that's just one of the, the key things is that they're creating, they're trying to create additional housing that is close into the city center of Amsterdam. And so we do see some, you know, some, some higher vertical, uh, housing structures as well as some office buildings, uh, you know, outside of the historic city core of, of Amsterdam. So this is a nice shot of that. I don't know if you'd keep this in John, but, uh, density is an interesting question. And I, and I'll take a moment just to plug our friend Jordan's, uh, podcast there because he had a, he has an absolutely excellent episode on density. Um, and I think I listened to it right after getting back from here. And, and when you see those high rises here, like there's nowhere where I felt crowded, right? Like there is a way to do it. And I'm not an urban planner. I can't speak to it like a professional can. I just know what it feels like to be around, right? And it feels right there. 
Talk, talk to that, uh, Jordan, a little bit, because, you, yeah, you and AJ did a fabulous uh, episode on density. Uh, well, thanks. Yeah, I think one of the things that sticks out when you're in Am a place like Amsterdam, especially the parts like um, with the, the shorter building heights that are kind of more evenly distributed, is how, you know, it's a densely packed city population wise, but at no point did it really feel like suffocating in the way that I think some people are afraid of when they, you know, think about density or just, you know, people have different comfort levels given what they grew up around. And a place like Amsterdam, I think just demonstrates that you can achieve a population, a high population density with still pretty small, short building stock. You know, this, Amsterdam obviously is a really old city that was building with older technologies and, you know, for a, a transportation system that was mostly just people walking around, right? But uh, yeah, it still continues to work today. It, it still continues to be, you know, economically viable. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There's the density discussion is a really big one and it's much more nuanced than it uh, tends to be discussed in, you know, when, when it's a sort of like pro or anti density um, debate like that. But uh, I think there's a lot more interesting stuff to talk about than is density good or bad. Ari, when you hear the word density, is that a, a positive thing or a negative thing or a neutral thing? Well, I think it's a positive thing. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, there's definitely like a debate where we live about, about density and the missing middle and all those sort of types of buzzwords that basically mean that we don't, you know, have as much density as we could. Um but when we're there, we definitely, you know, you, you get the impression when you're out in the street that there's a lot of people around. And certainly the type of housing we would see tended to lean more towards like multi-unit kind of um, buildings or, or homes, but that were low rise, right? So you get that feeling of more, you know, a bit smaller living. If anything, one of the things I noticed more on this trip is like how many times we would walk down some of these little streets and how beautiful the streets were and how the upkeep and the, the greenery and, you know, there's clearly a lot of love in that small area that they have. Um, but that people would have their like shades open. So you can kind of see inside and get a sense of like how people are living inside those spaces. I found that, you know, really, really interesting because it's such a different, um, type of living than what we are led to believe we should be living in, in North America, you know, where everything is big or you should want to live somewhere that's, that's really big and has a lot of space and a lot of outdoor space. So like seeing how, how it works on the other end, um, is definitely really interesting. Yeah. And yeah, when John, I look one at, thing, yeah, go ahead, Jordan. One thing I think I might add to the, density discussion is, you know, just how like some people might kind of consider density as sort of a just inherent negative. I think it can also be sometimes presented as like this sort of silver bullet like this, like it, it naturally follows that if you have a high density place that X, Y, and Z good things. But I think sometimes the, the question of texture gets left out. And I think what, felt so comfortable about so many streets in Amsterdam is not just that it was a high density place comparatively like to North America. It's that the streets also had a lot of texture and like uh, just interesting differentiation between the facades of the buildings and everything. And, you know, I could see the same level of density just in boxes that have no, you know, character or definition and the, uh, the and the connection is sort of like, the level of connection between buildings and places like there are so many more dimensions than just population density that make a place comfortable and the same level yeah just to bring it back the same level of one of density like may or may not you know have the same uh, feeling uh, if i could I'd, I'd add my little amateur take on what jordan had to say there too is is um, and i understand it if if um i look at some of the dense building that we have here in toronto it's kind of on its own little island right um, and you have this pocket of high rise, uh, living spaces, but not a lot around them. 
and this is something Ari and I talked a lot when we were over there is no matter where we were, like we know there's a grocery store around the corner, right? We know there's going to be a park within a kilometer or two where we can go and, and have a seat, right? So it's not these islands. It's, and, and I, I know, I don't think this is what you mean by texture, but you have the infrastructure around the density to make it livable and feel comfortable. Uh, where it's not just, you know, um, I, I wouldn't say prisons, where it's not just just large square buildings full of people with nothing around it. Oh, I think that is a part of texture for sure. That's a gr- okay. really great point. Yeah. 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 And I, I went to this little clip here because I just think it's a, a, a fabulous little clip to your, your point area about um, – you know, there's just, there's such life to the, the street as well. And uh, so when you do have that ability to have lots of people in proximity, you're able to get more people walking and biking and being able to make those meaningful trips. And so it, it's, that's, it's all part of that equation. We were just talking about kind of the street life, but one of the things that we saw on this trip was uh was probably because of the area we were staying in but you know like a bunch of teenagers kind of riding together young people going out on their bikes <laughs> and it's kind of like it's it, it was hilarious like there was something about you know seeing a bunch of teens after school or you know going out in the evening on their bikes that was really you know it, it's entertaining <laughs> to see for sure but it's sort of plays against type in a lot of ways and what you would expect to see from that age group. Yeah. The other thing I absolutely adore, I, I can't get enough of it, is just the the number of parents that you see riding with their kids. And it's just, to me, this is just... Yeah, without a helmet. Like that always just... Yeah. Bop, like I, I always feel like, uh, like it's a surprise, right? But also like, wow. <laughs> Like they obviously feel so safe that they're, right. you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we've been lingering on this for a while, Dave, you, you may, you went out of your way to make sure that you got a shot of this. What are we <laughs> looking at here? Yeah. I mean, we've got, we've, we've got the mail we've or, or packages or, or some sort of home delivery going on by cargo bike. And, you know, of course, being involved in that uh, business here in, in North America, uh, going back on this trip, it wasn't something, I mean, it was something I noticed on previous visit there, but, you know, I mean, we were there for the cargo bike festival, right? Uh, and, and and so I was sort of hyper aware of, of really what what is the, you know, volume of delivery do we see being done by bike in, in Amsterdam? And and when you're looking for it, like, I mean, it is absolutely everywhere. Yeah, this this guy. Go back to that one, John. That is, uh, I might get the model wrong, model wrong. That's the Urban Arrow Tender. I think it's the 2500, which is the the absolute biggest one that that they sell. And we're, we're starting to see those sold in Toronto. I mean, that, that bike has, th- those are vehicle tires on the front, right? Uh, it is enormous uh, for a bike, um, but it has its place, right? And and I think uh, an interesting thing about this world there that I learned from visiting, uh, we went, I, I went to um, a depot. Uh, I've got a picture in there somewhere, but it's uh, Cyclone, which is a very large delivery company in in Amsterdam. Was them talking about their struggles being able to use large bikes given the severe or severely high volume of cyclists in the bike lanes, right? right? So where here, I can see this going down one of our roads in Toronto, maybe not a bike path, but you know, there, these, the, this size or trailers, that sort of thing is limited because everybody is on a bike, right? So when you get to an intersection and you got to make a turn on, on a little, you know, they do have narrow bike paths, right? Like not everything there is 20 feet wide. Like, uh, like a lot of people think, right, is, is there is a limit to, you know, even the bikes and, and, you know, um, what, what space is appropriate for different types of delivery. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So you see a lot more of this size than, you know, what you might see coming out of Germany or what you might see, you know, even with my company here where you have gigantic trailers loaded with bins is there, you have to, you have to play to type right into where you're going to fit. And we're rolling up on the Rijks Museum. Did you guys get a chance to visit the Rijks Museum? Uh, we we went on our first trip, so we, we Did didn't. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, we didn't do the Rijks Museum this time. Yeah, we rode yeah. by it about a billion times, though. Yeah, but we yeah we yeah. love that ride. 
Fruits yeah, I was, I was teasing Jordan uh, because uh, he didn't realize that he was going to uh, lead us through the, the riding through the tunnel of the Rijksmuseum, um, which was uh, one, on one of our uh, previous uh, November 1st videos. And we were able to do that. Uh, and I love the fact that we were so close to a little uh, windmill here, which is good. And we were and we were heading to dinner, which I can't remember exactly what we had, but it was fabulous. Yeah, it was a great little spot. I can't remember either. Anyways, yeah, it was fantastic. You guys yeah. brought your Bromptons in. I do remember. I mean, that was an example um, of um, like that was a that was a fast, busy bike lane that we were on, right? And 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 this is, I think, not to get off track. And I, I'd love your guys' opinion on this too, though. Is you know when you go there the first time, it's all amazing. Right. When you go the second time, you maybe start to be a little bit more not picky, but just realize like like uh, it's tough getting in and out of traffic sometimes. Right. And, and I think we had a near miss or two even pulling off to the side uh, just because of the sheer vol volume. Right. And so I think it's just, uh, you know, like this is a good example here. This is amazing. I could do this all day. But the first couple of times you jump into something like this, it, it can be a little unnerving. Right. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I think a big a big component of that is just the the speed, you know, variation with the e bikes these days. That probably wasn't yeah. so much of an issue with the same volume of traffic fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I totally Ari, agree. you were talking about that. You you certainly noticed that as well on this trip, right? Especially with what the cargo bikes. Yeah, like I feel like there were more cargo bikes. There were more electric, like like e assist types bikes than we even saw. Like a couple of people, like on on you know fat bikes, some scooters. But yeah, there was like a definitely more diversity in the types of bikes that people were riding. You know, I think the stereotype is you know, or what we hear often is like all oh, the black. Alma Feet's kind of bike, but I, I felt like there was a wider variety in, in what we saw. And definitely, you know, people ride very fast, you know, whether it's electrified or not. Yeah, it's, and I, I think that, and this is a great shot here uh, that you, you, you captured, Dave, because it's, you, you see a little bit of the, the mixture of humanity there, but you also, if you look closely, you can see that there's actually a scooter right there. And so there you've got a guy on a scooter in the mix and yeah, I mean, it's, that's a controversial thing, the whole scooter in the bike lanes, uh, situation. And, um, ultimately I'm not one to like try to single out a, di a, a particular type of mobility, whether it's, uh, uh, a bike, an e-bike, a, a scooter, et cetera. And, and basically say, oh, you're banned. You're, you're bad. We're good. I don't like to do that. I, I would prefer to try to lean towards, you know, really trying to create a s situation where uh, everyone can get along and it's a safe and inviting environment for all ages and abilities. And then using that as the baseline. And then if that's the baseline and it gets to the point where, yeah, you know what, these things are, are a bit too powerful and the rider behavior is such that it's aggressive enough that, yeah, you know what, you really should be over with the other motor vehicles. And that's the direction that the city of Amsterdam is going. And we do know that within the, the city ring, uh, Jason Slaughter was pointing out that in that ring, unless they don't have another opportunity, uh, they really are supposed to be in the motorway. And technically, uh, based on the size of their motor, they're also supposed to have a helmet on um, because they are supposed to be out there with the motor vehicle traffic. Uh, once they're outside the ring, out into the industrial areas and the suburbs, then they're, they, they're able to come back onto the cycle tracks. But again, it, it's that situation of, okay, but <laughs> what about behavior and making sure that you're not putting people's lives at risk uh, and, and really, you know, dealing with the fact that, uh, and I think you have mentioned this several times, Jordan, and I think you have even mentioned it uh, with AJ in your podcast, is that differential of speed. That's a huge part of the engineering and the physics of all of this is that we need to be concerned with massive differences, differences in uh, speeds. So, Yeah, John, and that's like a key 
a piece of the Dutch sustainable safety, you know, approach to roadway design. It's just not like you're saying some kind of demonization of different roadway users, but one of them is a separation um, is like providing separation when there's a big difference in speed uh, or a big difference in mass um, or um, I think there was a few other components that they want to like provide separation. And in the cases where they're that, where that's not possible, um, slowing to the speed and movement of the most vulnerable. But like, I think, yeah, I wouldn't really be surprised if we start seeing a lot more changes in, in the approach to bike, you know, who, who gets to use bike infrastructure, just as like, we're seeing like technological changes, putting, uh, you know, users of big vehicles that go a lot faster along with, you know, people riding old school bikes. Yeah. I could see us in, in, in a day, not too far in the future. And Dave, you, you can talk about this from your perspective of, of out there on the streets running some of these larger uh, cargo delivery tr- uh, bikes and, and cycles that we, we could have a situation where, you know, we may have just like we saw parking set aside for uh, package deliveries. I could even see us at, at some point in time seeing, uh, you know, set aside real estate set aside in the right of way that is prioritized just like we do with buses for the delivery of packages and cargo and larger cargo um, cycles uh, simply because, yeah, I mean, you, the, the size uh, differential or the size and the mass and the speed and they're, you know, having limited space, I think we could get a lot more space for these bigger quote unquote cycle deliveries and cycle logistics. if we just take a little bit of real estate away from those uh, cars. Yeah. I mean, I think this could be its own episode is talking about this kind of stuff. Um, you know, to circle back like a little bit and talking about speed and diversity of bicycles and that sort of thing. I, I really don't want to misquote Henry, but when we were at work cycles, I did ask him about that, you know, how, how does that discussion happen in Amsterdam? And very frankly, his response was, you know, a lot of people complained that people not native to Amsterdam weren't riding bikes. And now they're complaining that they're not riding the right bikes, uh, but it's better than driving a car. Right. So I I think there are all sorts of different ways to look at it. Um, I'll say this, like our city in particular, compared to any city I visited in the last couple of years, has more e-bike delivery riders by exponential numbers than any other city. So it's a very hot topic here. And it does come down to not who's riding the bike, but how are you riding the bike? Right. And and the speeds. We do have limits here where e-assist is supposed to cut out at 32 kilometers an hour. That's a provincial regulation. It's very easy to get around that. And then you get into really complicated questions about enforcement. Right. Who's doing the enforcement? How is it being enforced? Is it being enforced fairly? Are you picking on certain groups like this is a whole podcast on its own because it's tricky because the fact is, you know, there is a great push for e-bikes right now, but there's a lot of different types of e-bikes out there. Right. And, and so we're going to be forced to deal with this. And you talked about areas for cargo bike delivery that maybe have different regulations. And, and actually, we do have some of that already in Toronto where it's very haphazardly bylawed. But on certain types of bike lanes, there are certain types of bikes that are allowed. Um, and, and I believe in some of it. Right. Um, I, I think it, it gets really tricky with regulation on new on a new industry is, do you have the right people making the right decisions? Are they actually knowledgeable about what's going on? Because it usually ends up being car, well, quote unquote, car people, right? And so, you know, here, you know, sorry if this gets too in depth, but we have restrictions based on weight of the frame of your bike. Now I could have a 10 pound bike with hundreds of pounds on it though. So, so what does it matter what my frame ways, right? So there's all sorts of nuance here. But I do believe in general, like, and I have, you know, if we go back to that urban arrow tender picture, you know, we, I have bikes like that close to that size in our fleet at nearby. And, you know, there are times where I'm conflicted. Is this a bike at this point? Right? And does it belong with other bikes? And, you know, if delivery bikes are going to be, uh, you know, promoted as a urban delivery solution in major centers, then I do think that, you do need to start to establish routes, routes that are built for that size, routes that people are aware there are going to be that size bikes, you know, interacting with them. Because we're talking hundreds of pounds. And this picture right here, 
I think this is used to transport children to gyms for schools that maybe don't have gyms or recreational programs or something yeah, like in that. Fact, you I guys was, might I was gonna know. ask Ari, what, what do you think of this? This is cool. How many kids <laughs> do you think we could throw in here? Oh, eight, 10, 12. <laughs> yeah. How big are the kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly it's, it's little ones. It's, it's little ones. And it's one of the things that we, we, we see from time to time in some of our footage is a whole bunch of kids, uh, on a contraption, uh, and this particular one, they're not pedaling. This is, this is actually controlled by throttle, uh, the, uh, an electric uh, contraption, um, and, and carting them off to the activity. And since there is a, uh, uh, an image of a football or soccer ball on there, clearly it's uh, getting them to the pitch so that they can uh, kick around and have some fun. But yeah, so this is another one of the, you know, little, what, what do we call this? What is this? And is it allowed? And, and the answer is yes, it is allowed. And, and, and it moves at slow, you know, medium speeds, you know, even though the, the physics of it is such that, yeah, it's, it's, the mass is higher and, you know, there, there can be some conflicts with it. But uh, again, do you want, do you, do you want them out mixing it up with, uh, 50 kilometer per hour motor vehicles? Well, no, not at all. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a matter of real estate and trying to figure things out because yeah, this is what it looks like out there on the cycle paths. And, and, uh, there's lots and lots of people out there, but what I love about this environment is just how chill everybody is and really how you just, you get used to being very, very close to each other. Ari, when you, when you look at that and you think about that and, and it, all these people, like you said earlier, riding around without helmets on, oh my gosh, how terrible. But at the same time, everybody's just so relaxed and easygoing and chill about it. Just makes it easy to ride. Yeah. And people know their space. Like, I think that's a surprise too, right? If you have someone kind of riding up beside, you know, sometimes it's a bit like, oh. But, uh, you know, they understand their space really well. And, you know, it's like you're in a school of fish. <laughs> you just got to go with it. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So kind of bringing us uh, a little bit to a close here, uh, Jordan, what are some of your thoughts um, of you know, having the, had this opportunity to go through the three different segments of this long day that we had there on November 1st, uh, there in Amsterdam, what are, what are some of the, the thoughts that sort of roll through your mind of, you know, looking back at that, that full day? And I think this was your, your first real full day of being on the streets in, in, in Amsterdam. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, yeah, I think the thing that really jumped out about me, r really, the thing that really jumped out to me about being in Amsterdam was just how chaotic it felt sometimes, which we're talking about here and how, you know, the level of comfort that people seem to have with, you know, some close passes and close quarters and that being a little bit different than some of the, you know, maybe slower paced cities that we were in. You know, it's just something that we pointed out in a, in a previous episode is, how much the planning and design adapts, you know, block by block to the space and constraints present on, on every given block. And that means that not every single street is the exact ideal of maybe how you'd design a brand new street in terms of the space allocated to people on foot uh, or people on bikes and deliveries and everything. But like in the real world, they have a lot of space constraints to work with and the reality that people still drive cars and, uh, you know, we have identified areas where improvements probably could be made, but yeah, I mean, it was really fun to see it in action in the most hectic of all Dutch environments. Yeah. Yeah. So for Dave, for you and Ariane, you, you had the opportunity to, to get some glam shots. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Ari, do you want to talk about this or? Oh no, go ahead. I'm not as active on social media as I, as I, as I have been in the last few years, but there, there's an account, uh, an Instagram account called rolling spoke, uh, on Instagram. I uh, just got a website as well and a small presence on Twitter, but, um, 
he does street photography uh, in Amsterdam, and uh, I've long been a fan of him. And uh, on our way over, you know, we do listen. We do it at home too, uh, but we love to get dressed up uh, and and go out for dinner once in a while uh, by bike. And um, we just, I just this time, I didn't want to get like the, you know, the phone off to the side selfie. Uh, so I reached out, and he was, doesn't typically do this, but uh, he spent an afternoon with us. Uh, turns out this gentleman Gus is also from Toronto. He's a transplant, lives in Amsterdam. This is what he does, among some other things. He's also a bike tour guide. So we just had an absolutely fantastic afternoon of him taking us around, both on a tour, but also to some of the best photo spots uh, in the city. And I mean, these are, these are memories, I don't know, to me, there's some memories that we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have forever. And I'm, I'm really happy. Like, he's just a very talented person. And to have these to bring back and you know what? Yeah, it's for us, but it's also great to show people again. And, and that's what the whole city is. It, it's, it's, it shows people what's possible, right? Like this is not abnormal there, right? It's very abnormal here, but I, I just love these and, and, and uh, Ariel, I'll, I'll let you talk a little bit about it as well. Well, and, and Ariel, I'm going to serve it up to you because when I think of you and before you and I had this opportunity to meet in person, of course, I, I knew you vicariously a little bit through my first interview with Dave and uh, some of the images of, of, yeah, you guys getting dressed up and going out and having fun. This is the, you dig this. This is part of your identity. You love to get dressed up and go on a bike ride. Yeah. Well, it's super fun. I mean, that's, I mean, this is like going back to our first trip. I mean, that was the eye opener, right? Is just seeing women on their bikes wearing heels or whatever it is, or, you know, it's the whole dress for your destination thing, but you know, there's no, you can tell that no one is overthinking, like, you know, should I wear my sporty gear over whatever? Like they don't care. They just go out and do their thing. So um, you know, that was made a huge impression and we certainly like to recreate it in Toronto. Um, but yeah, this was, this was quite special. And I mean, one of the things that is so great about these pictures is that he, he knew, he knew where to go to get the shot that sort of show also shows Amsterdam. So when you look at these pictures, you know where you are. It's not like, you know, that's a pretty picture of us on bikes. It's more like, oh yeah, that's Amsterdam. So Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so very much for bringing us all down memory lane. <laughs> this is so much fun. Thank you, uh, Ari, for, for, for doing this and, and, and breaking up the, this, this, this dude fest here. Uh, it's so <laughs> wonderful to, to have you. And, uh, and Dave, again, thank you. thank you so much for, for, for joining me once again. Uh, this is sort of like a, qua it turned into sort of like a quasi podcast. I'm still just going to call it a reaction vid video. Sure. And, uh, and Jordan, again, thank you very much, partner in crime. We've got quite a few more days yet to record. So, cause uh, this, this would have represented uh, November 1st, of course. And then you left on the, the so we still have a few more days of uh, more reaction videos. Again, thank you all so very much. It's been such an honor having you here on the Active Towns channel. Thanks, John. Thank nice you. To see you again, it's been a pleasure. Take care, guys. Thank you, John. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this reaction video and <laughs> walk down memory lane for Ari, Dave, Jordan, and me. And if you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd obviously be very honored and delighted if you wouldn't subscribe to the channel. I uh, just hit click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell and select your notification preferences. It means so much to me and helps out a great deal. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. Thank you.